What's going on, everybody? Hope you're doing well. My name is Lamont. I've been a full-time trader for seven years now, part of the Chart Guys team for more than half of that, where I head up our futures room and our swing report. In this video, we will go over the overall market, cover some smaller sectors, and uh, hit you with some trade zones, update you on some old ideas, and uh, that's pretty much it. So let's get into it. All right, so starting off with SPY, um, last week we were saying, okay, well, we were pretty much right here at this, right under the key supply over here, right? The uh, end of last week was pretty much right here, under 537.45, where this, uh, the low of the 724281 uh, supply. And the sellers were positioned really well to defend, but they just simply didn't, right? The buyers got one, two, three gap ups without seeing really any retracement. And this is very notable bounce to to not only make space for a daily higher low which you know obviously anything over 510 27 is going to be good for one but to trade to the pretty much the entire other side of this supply is very notable this is a lot of buying trends you you know you don't really see that in in like a you know bear markets right like don't get me wrong bear uh bull rallies in bear markets can be rippers but you know to come back all the way up to this all-time high supply to to miss coming down to back test this prior 2021 high by a lot you know to me I, I don't know again i just don't really see that much fear in the market i'm sure the fear and greed index is probably still like neutral or fearish it's still in fear you know so as we were saying in the prior prior videos there's really not that much uh damage that's being done there's not that much negative uh or rather there's not that much positive sentiment out there which you know, doesn't typically lead to major highs, right? So, you know, that aged pretty well. <laughs> that, that, that opinion has aged pretty well so far. Uh, we'll take it obviously day by day. So now what we're looking out for is, uh, can these buyers hold over here, right? So at this point now, this guy is still key because although we have traded up uh, through the point of control, through the value area high, I got to imagine there's going to be some retracement, right? Like what that retracement looks like is going to be super telling. If the retracement remains over this value area high, 546.64 that's pretty much the best case scenario for buyers because that would mean that this gap is going to remain unfilled and it would also mean that we are affirming this structure as demand uh the next best case scenario would be to hold over 542.21 as long as we're holding over 542.21 then this structure is being affirmed as demand it's just that we would be the buyers would prefer to not even come back down to the poc and just hold over the value area high OK, and the, for the sellers now, they have a decent amount of work to, to try to pick up where they left off. This was, you know, very they, they progressed well. Right. They built supply here. They built supply here. You broke down and then they just couldn't defend against the supply. So if these sellers want to get back to business now, they need to break five three seven point four five. All right. So um, that's 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 pretty much it. We can take this trade zone that we set up uh, last week. Obviously, <laughs> obviously didn't wasn't even close that the, there was just no selling at all or next to no selling left from last week so we'll just go ahead and move this up to something like this right like we're i think it's reasonable to be playing to be playing like off of this structure right i would say i think let me, let me just zoom out and see where this all this volume it picks back up i don't hate that you know the best case scenario of course would be for these buyers they didn't even trade back down through this area right best case scenario would be to hold over the value area high hold over the hold over the point of control, right? Um, and definitely you don't want to lose this guy. But you would be pretty beaten up if the sellers were to take price all the way back down to test this weekly no change level, which it's kind of hard to see, it's over here. So a lot of volume here. A lot of volume here, so we can use both as our trade zone. Pretty low risk. We're just looking to get back to the supply because you know, we could very well be looking at something like just bigger picture bounce, right? Like this was a major selling. This was a very notable bounce, but this was also because it was such a notable bounce, you know, the odds of you seeing straight up all through right to new highs is not great. Like it could happen, but it's not great. So I would not be surprised if we were to see some balance. And as long as we're balance, balancing over this prior weekly breakout point, then this, this weekly breakout is again being affirmed. So I think something like this is pretty reasonable. Let me, let me see what it looks like on the pivots for the, wow. I mean, the R3 for the year is up at 609. So, you know, you, you have very few tools to project, right? When you are dealing with blue sky breakout. So I don't know, buyers look, buyers look fine to me, right? And again, we're just looking at this continuing to monitor the situation given with the, with the economy, right? As long as jobs 
uh, don't deteriorate too much as long as inflation continues to chill out. I think we got a better than expected inflation reading. Um, then, you know, the, the, the soft landing scenario is very likely still. So that's pretty much it. Um, Q, Q, Q. All right. So moving on to the Qs here, it's, hold on. I think we use this chart here. It's already marked up. Okay, so for the Qs, it's pretty similar, right? They moved through this entire supply here. For when we ended last week, they were right here, right? You were testing this, the the low of this uh, daily supply. And same deal, right? They traded completely to the other side of it. Very, very notable. Anything over 423.45 is going to be good for a daily higher low. The QQQ tech sector is a little bit weaker than the SPY, right? The SPY only has this little structure left in its way, I believe. Just that one little structure left in its way, whereas QQQ still has, you can call it two steps, right? I'm leaving this structure up as a reference because this structure's point of control aligns much better with where all this volume is traded. Uh, they're going to tell you similar stories. So, you know, if you're using this guy, it's fine. It's not, it's not going to be that big of a deal. Okay, so at this point, it's the same idea, right? What these buyers want to get done is to just hold over the value area high at 467.42 or the point of control at 463.07 the sellers need to get back under 454.15 if they want to pick up where they have just failed right because what they what they just failed to do was to defend this area of supply right or technically it's acting as demand now right because you've traded over the point of control so um that is pretty much it regarding a trade zone i, I don't know that we even had one from last week i'm not sure but going forward again very similar idea right we want to be playing where this volume is big right we'll we'll leave a little bit of wiggle room for the potential for a break with no follow-through something like this i think is pretty reasonable and you're again you're just trying to get back up to this local supply okay um so that's that's really it you know bigger picture too again everything looks really fine right the monthly time frame trying to set a higher low Weekly time frame making space for a weekly higher low. QQQ is the same deal. Monthly time frame trying to set that higher low. Weekly time frame making space for a weekly higher low. So that is pretty much it for the Qs. This anchored VWAP is just off of this last low. It's so far it's made some for some pretty good lows here. Um, that's really it. That's all I got for the Qs here. You know, you could be a little bit more conservative with this and just only start if like the hourly gets oversold. Like the, okay, so if the market's gonna stay strong, if we're gonna continue to rip, then what should happen is, and this is something Dan teaches, right? That hourly oversold conditions should mark daily higher lows. So the next time we see hourly oversold conditions, wherever we're at, right? I mean, you know, you wanna be selective with your location, right? So it should be somewhere where there's meaningful change and where there's a lot of volume. If those hourly oversold conditions will mark another daily higher low, then honestly, things look totally fine for the buyers. Okay. Moving on to IWM here. Am I on the right? Watch this. Yes. Moving on to IWM here. So remember for IWM, we continue to monitor the same key structures. It's these two guys over here that we really, really care about. This guy, which, which is what made for all the lows in the 2021 supply. And obviously it was problematic for buyers over here. Um, that remains key. So I was a seller here. I, I was a seller on this day after we, I was a buyer on this day. Uh, we li I live stream a bounce play there. Um, and then I was a seller on this day. We stopped out of that, that same day. I was a seller on this day. I was a seller on this day. Um, why? Because we were, the, the sellers were potentially defending against this guy. And if they were going to defend against this guy, then we, we should have been expecting this kind of price action. So I wanted to give myself the, uh, I wanted to give the sellers the potential to, you know, follow through with that, which they didn't do, which is fine. We just take our, you know, whatever we can get and run away, right? Um, I just mean that I took parcels out. So these were all profitable. Um, this one was a flat trade. I tried, I made an attempt today as well as a flat trade. Um, I just closed it out because I didn't want to hold it over the weekend, you know. Anyway, um, at this point now, though, if you are going to be a seller, you know, it still makes the most sense to try to be a seller in the IWM, the rough, the small caps, because anything under 228.63 is going to be good for a weekly lower high. Now, that being said, I'm probably not going to do that as aggressively anymore because I want to give them a shot. If they can hold over this 2021 structure, then we should expect price action like this, you know? So that's kind of it. Like, I, I, I remember I was, I, I have been running a long RTY campaign, rolling those proceeds into IWM. If you, you know, if you're interested in that, you can pop into our chat room, links in the description below, talk through all of my trades pretty much 
um, every day, excuse me. So <clears throat> I'm looking to get that back to that, right? Like it, it, as long as we're holding over this 2021 structure, or even if we're extended and coming down near these lows, I'm just going to keep looking to, to operate that RTY campaign, rolling these proceeds into IWM. Because again, my fundamental thesis is that the small cap should benefit once rate cuts come, assuming the economy stays strong. So I'm probably going to hold off on this. Um, ideally, though, they'll press a little bit higher here, make more space over this structure before I look for like a bottom fishing play, right? Pretty much, I want a repeat of this, right? I want there to be hourly oversold conditions into this key structure, extension, location, and then um, I would be interested in a play for IWM. So it's a little bit different. We're showing a lot of relative weakness, of course, because you have this big area of supply and then you have this huge area of supply compared to SPY and QQQ. That being said, there's space for a daily higher low over 203.82. Anything over that will be good for one. And um, that's, that's, that's really it. Moving on to the dollar here. So the dollar, again, we're just watching these key structures, right? These two structures, this supply and this demand has contained price since Q4 of 2022. And so as of right now, after rejecting from the key, uh, key supply, these sellers should be trying to respond in kind, just like they did here, deep down to here, just like the buyers responded in kind, taking price from the demand to the supply. And then the sellers, again, it's like, you know, ping pong, right? They just keep going back and forth between these two areas. And so that's what the seller's goal is right now. In order for them to do that effectively from here, what they need to do then is to hold this area of local supply. That's why this, you know, sell zone is up here, because as long as the uh, sellers can defend against this area over here, then they should be trying to continue their march downward to this area of uh, demand. So remember what we were talking about, right? If, they, if you do happen to see some consolidation here and then break under this low, this should all be pretty easy work for the sellers, right? Because this is more or less one-way trade. So if you break this low after consolidating for some time, you should squeeze these longs. The sellers should squeeze these longs. And if they don't squeeze these longs, if you get like an incomplete move back down here and then a move back over this point of control over here, that would be a pretty bullish sign. And it would be reasonable to be looking for a higher low here and then targeting here, targeting here. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Um, I don't really care about the daily trend. You know, it's it, it's it, this matters a lot more, right? The supply matters a lot more. For example, here was a higher low, higher high, no follow through. Why was that? Why should we have been paying attention to that potential? Is because there's supply right there, you know? So if you higher low and higher high over that guy, that's a lot more promising. Although, you know, there's still way more supply. So anyway, that's the idea, right? Like if you don't even negate the change of the most recent breakdown, a higher low and higher high, to me at least, doesn't really mean that much. Um, and I, you know, all you damn purists out there, uh, you know, don't crucify me. Or I mean, you can try. Um, all right, so moving on to the VIX here. So the VIX has, again, returned pretty much, you know, completely deflated here, returning back down under this October level. So as long as we're under 1544, remember that we are pretty much looking at the same exact environment that we were, um, you know, looking at since the October of 2023, which was the low, you know, the most recent major, or I guess it's not really that recent anymore, but that was the last major low, right? October 2023 was there, here. Um, and SPY looked a lot worse, I think, yeah. Um, anyway, so that's pretty much it. So best case scenario is to continue to stay under 1544. And again, there's really just not, not a lot of euphoria. You know, there's not a lot of euphoria out here. Typically major highs are made when you have greed or extreme greed. And um, that's, that's, that's really it. So again, not really, there's just not really that much weakness out there. And there's not really much reason to be weakness, right? I'm trying to think of it like catalysts in the future. You know, the like the, the the whispers of like an emergency rate cut is probably the biggest thing. It just doesn't seem like considering all the economic data that's coming out, it just doesn't seem like that's gonna happen. Um, all right. Oh, I'm on the wrong chart here. Moving on to MVDA. So MVDA came into our trade zone, already hit our target, greatly surpassed our target already. Again, very, very notable bounces. This was really just targeting where the volume picks back up over here. So to just you know drill right through all of that volume and then come into this key supply is very notable daily higher low and higher high anything over 97.52 is going to be good for a, a daily higher low and at this point now if you don't have a position obviously if you use this trade zone shout out to jungle Fund, by the way he crushed this trade he used the vp approach only took only took me two years to convince him to actually <laughs> to, to you know look at this form of technical sequencing and he's taking it and ran with it and smashing it i'd love to see it um so 
What I would like to do now, right? Or rather, what I think is a more reasonable trade zone now would be to just move. I guess we don't have to clone it. Is to just move this up now, right? Like if you're looking for a higher low play, you have no position. I just did the same thing twice. Uh, <laughs> oops. Then something like this, you know. Honestly, hang on a second here. Let me just make an adjustment like this. I still think playing off this guy is reasonable. Like we could very easily just see balance like this. So something like this, I think, for if you have no position at all, I think very reasonable. I guess you could play all the way up to here. I think the hourly would be oversold if you were to come just to where this volume picks up over here, which is you know pretty pretty much just playing off of this little bit of demand over here. Something like this makes a lot of sense. The weekly time frame looks totally fine at this point. You had a weekly lower high, lower low straight into a move that's negated this breakdown, right? Because we're back over this prior low here. Monthly time frame, just looking for a healthy monthly higher low. Honestly, uh, Charlie looks totally fine. So we shall see. When is earnings? End of August. So we'll see. Uh, moving on to Bitcoin here. So Bitcoin, we continue to just monitor this key supply back from back in 2021. As long as we're holding over it, then it's being affirmed as demand. As of right now, we are in it and getting caught up where at the point of control 61003.36. Got to get over this point of control to get back to thinking that should get back to uh, being demand. Essentially, it's not our thinking. It's just it is what it is, right? That's a reference that the market has left us. It's market generated information, as uh, some folks would say. And um, and um, that's that, that's really it. So I'm watching this guy because this guy made for this low here was a battleground over here it was clearly a battle over here and then now we flip back on onto it so you know this is pretty much i would say this is a really good reference for whether or not we're going to find acceptance under this guy right like you had a liquidity sweep under this guy you didn't really see that much follow through and then you're, the buyers are trying to hook right back onto this area here using it as demand so if these buyers can hold this area, get back over 61003.36, then it's right back to being positioned really well for another go at the all-time high. And I think, I kind of feel like crypto is just waiting. Like if the market is going to continue to stay strong, especially if we continue to see new highs and crypto is just trading sideways, it's probably just a laggard, right? Like you're probably just kind of sitting here waiting. It was the laggard on this move up as well. I'm not sure why I'm pointing. I can just use my mouse. It was a laggard on this move out. And shout out to Trent for pointing that out to me. I actually remember that wrong. But um, this move topped out in March 14th. And obviously the market's still ripping, right? March 14th is over here, you know? So the, the market had already gone, broken to new highs, broken to new highs over here way before March 14th. So it, to me, it just seems like Bitcoin is a bit of a lag here, right? And so what the Bitcoin buyers want to see then is just to see the overall market stay strong, ideally make new highs. Uh, ideally we'll see, you know, the market uh, the rally, I should say, broaden out a bit, right? If the small cap starts seeing some love, Bitcoin is probably going to see some love eventually too. You know, it's just a matter of like capital rotation, right? It's always a matter of chasing yield, you know? And so if things get too hot and heavy in the overall market, right? The um, the popular items or whatever, like the Mag7, they have their go. And then maybe, I don't know, maybe defensive stuff have their go a little bit while the you know tech cools off. And then if the small caps start going, all as as more and more sectors continue to have their go at all-time highs um the more likely it is that this is just a bit of a lagger play for bitcoin okay so just looking for a potential monthly higher low i'm just perceiving this as one move down so really anything over a uh, 24900 is going to be good for a monthly higher low and that is really it the daily trend is bearish but you know they're not really getting anywhere like i don't really care so much about the daily lower highs and lower lows I care more so about what are these, how is price responding to these references? Okay. So that is pretty much it. You know, technically they haven't negated the change of this breakdown yet, right? They failed to come and test the daily no change level 63222.60. But that being said, like, you know, again, as long as we're holding over this guy, it means we're not coming down here. If we're not coming down here, we're not coming down here, then all of this is still just acting as demand. Like this, this, this low was pretty much right off the high of this much larger demand. Like we were looking at this guy as a reference, but you know, you just look at the difference in size, right? Much more value was established here locally. You know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not counting all this stuff. <laughs> That's what I mean by local. Um, so that is it. Moving on to Ethereum here. So Ethereum showing a lot of relative weakness. It's uh, really far away from the daily no change level of 
and they've not even negated the breakdown from these lows here. So this low and this low, the breakdown from here, not yet negated. So again, showing you a lot of relative weakness. Um, you know, monthly, technically have a lower high and lower low, but I, as long as you're holding over all of this demand that was created for two years, bigger picture, these buyers are okay. Now, the weekly time frame does have space for a lower high. Anything under 3563.02 would be good for one. You're, you're potentially setting it right here. So there's only, there's only one, uh, I'm recording this on Friday evening. Yes, Friday evening still. So there's only one day left, right, for this to, um, for this weekly candle. And so if you do set a, if you if it closes just like this, and then we break under 2509.58, then that weekly lower high is set. And that would not be great. So the, the first goal for these buyers is to get back over 2814.12 to negate the change of this breakdown. Then it is 3086.13 to negate the change of this breakdown and get back over the point of control of this structure over here. Because as long as we're over the POC of this guy, then we should expect price action like this. Okay, and the market has already affirmed this structure's importance. So we shall see. Okay, so on to our hype sectors that really aren't seeing much. You know, they were they were seeing hype when we first started doing these videos, uh, but as of right now, not really. And so for CCJ, I'm thinking we're probably looking at something like this, right? Where you make a higher high, you don't see follow through, come test the lows, you the lower low, no follow through, come test the highs, etc. Over and over again, we just made a higher high, no follow through. These sellers should be trying to come back down to test this guy, right? Because if if you're not, so basically if you if you zoom out right this is so clearly one big old area of demand right and so as long as you're holding over this big old weekly demand well then on the weekly time frame or the monthly time frame you know it's pretty they're like whatever you can they're exchangeable uh, interchangeable at this point you still be constructive right relative to this big old structure over here so that's why this trade zone is laid out as such this is pretty much looking for a potential weekly lower high to be set and then a lower low if you were to get extension, uh, get the daily and the weekly, because you would have daily and weekly oversold conditions into this area, I think this is a very interesting place to play CCJ. This is, I'm personally interested in this as well. And um, that's it. That is really it. And then finally we have MSO. So for MSOs, if you'll recall, we're still just using this guy, right? Like basically right now the battle is between this area of demand and this big area of supply. I have it marked up as individual um, like areas because when, you know, the, well, this one is definitely, we want to leave this guy up because it's the gateway into all of this, right? If you can't trade through this guy, then you don't come into here. And then these guys were just kind of on the way up and this was more or less one way trade. And so I figured it would be good to have references, you know, on the way up. And they did come in pretty handy, made for, up, I mean, it was affirmed many times here, right? With uh, value area low rejections, point of control rejection, value area high rejection, and then a value area low rejection, right? So um, I continue to maintain that this is a very reasonable trade zone. Ideally, you'll be using this trade zone if there's daily or bare minimum hourly oversold conditions into this area. If you do initiate trade here by no later than a test of this guy, right, over here, should you be coming out of partials, right? I suggest that you take partials out over here. Why? Because, well, this breakdown, right? I mean, say it with me, right? This breakdown from here has not yet been negated unless they can get back over 8.32. And you can see how the how the sellers have already had problems, right? Getting back over that level, you know? So that is pretty much it. Pretty much it. Uh, I will, no, that's pretty much it. Okay, so, um, yeah, appreciate you guys sharing some of your time and energy with me. If you got anything out of this video at all, we could very much appreciate a like and subscribe. Costs you nothing, helps us out a lot. Let's see, you know, lets us know that we should continue putting out content like this because, you know, we don't have, it's not any fancy, you know, videography or whatever, but it is definitely actionable advice. So, if you are interested in uh, joining a community of traders, links in the description below if you're interested in the swing report where you know you'll get trade ideas sent to you every single week and live updates for any ideas that i trade myself then uh give us a shot links in the description below otherwise i hope to see y'all next time farewell